What's up YouTube? This is Joe, you're watching Ink and Iron, and today we are going to talk about my EDC from when I was working as an industrial chemical blender. This was back in 2017. I spent about 10 months at this job. I had no former training, uh, so I learned everything as I went. Um, it was very interesting. I was essentially making industrial cleaning products, so things like soaps, of course, but then there were things like toilet bowl cleaner or um, cleaning products for beer fermenters, things that had serious work to do and got that work done by adjusting their pH. So something with a low pH is a very high acid, like a very strong acid. Something with a high pH is a very strong caustic or alkaline material. Both are super reactive and uh, because of that they tend to destroy gear uh, things like steel, wood, concrete over time were degrading in this environment and so I had to choose a very specific set of things to take with me every day. Things that one, I wasn't going to be heartbroken if they got screwed up. Two, I had faith in all of these items, um, especially you know this fountain pen here because I'm a handwriting type of guy and uh, this, this pen saw some things. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at my EDC from when I was blending chemicals every day. Okay, to start us off, I would like to just move this to one side. This is the flip side 3x wallet. Um, I did carry this when I was a chemical blender every day. Um, it held up just fine. And I have a full review of this wallet. Put a link in the description or check out my other videos. And the next thing would be the Phoenix PD35. I actually did not have this flashlight uh, working as a chemical blender. I was using a different uh, flashlight. I think I found it on Amazon. It was about 800 lumens and waterproof. So it was similar to this. However, that flashlight got dropped into a barrel full of chemicals on at least one occasion. It may have been two. So I don't think uh, it survived by the time I had stopped working that job. So this was just sort of a stand-in for me. So I'm going to move this to the side. And then there were four. These four pieces of gear came with me every day and I'm just going to give you a quick rundown as to uh, why I chose them and what happened to them. So first up this is the Kershaw CQC7. Uh, I think this may be a discontinued version of it in the Tanto point. You can see it's got a nice hollow grind, nice Tanto tip. I chose the Tanto because it was good at lifting stickers off of things like barrels and drums because I was relabeling things a lot. The wave opener allows you to open this knife one-handed, which is super handy if you're holding something slippery and need to make a cut at the same time, which happened a lot more than I care to admit. Um, this is a stainless steel scale that creates the frame lock here. It is still stiff. There's no motion. Really the most damage that this knife suffered, you can see right here, is all the corrosion from being in the open position. Uh, this is a, a combination of things that cause this damage. I'm actually going to cut in a photo of this blade free of the handle so you can see the full extent of the damage. It does also extend uh, to the liners, so it's pretty bad. The action, it works, however it feels very sluggish. Um, this knife is retired as far as I'm concerned. I don't carry this on a daily basis because the action isn't great. And also uh, it's kind of a souvenir from the time I was doing this really crazy job. Um, this thing got exposed to really strong acids, really strong uh, caustic materials, including lye, um, that is to say caustic soda. <clears throat> it will burn your skin. It will also corrode your steel. So there we go. Kershaw CQC7 kind of survived. <laughs> kind of. Next up, this is the Keras Penco Fountain K pen. It's called a Fountain K because it's actually a fountain pen. This is a titanium nib on here. This is an aluminum, um, I think stonewashed aluminum section. 
it has some scale on it, which I'll explain in a second. And then the anodized aluminum body here also has some wear and tear. So let's start here. This finish got marred in my pocket. So I used to carry this just in my pocket. Um, I did replace the clip so it was a little more robust. This one's a lot stronger than the clip that comes with it. But regardless, this was in my pocket at all times. And uh, I actually was blending powder and liquids at one point. That was like my full spectrum of job duties. So in the process of blending powder, I got a lot of caustic soda and um, sodium percarbonate, which is like, think of it as like powdered um, peroxide, powdered hydrogen peroxide. It's a very strong oxidizer. <clears throat> Oxygen likes to react with materials and corrode them. And so that's what you're looking at, a combination of caustic soda and uh, sodium percarbonate corrosion. And like I said, this happened in my pocket. Um, if you're looking at it this way, this side of the pen was actually close to my body. So I believe my perspiration mixed with the powdered chemicals turned them into sort of, I guess, a paste in my pocket, which kind of started to eat through the pen. So that's that. And then the scale on this section actually came from me. I had this section steeping in ammonia overnight. And uh, yeah, it happened to deposit something on the aluminum, and now it has this cool corroded look. Um, I say cool corroded look because this was already corroded by that time, so now it seems like a matching set. Anyway, long story short, this pen survived the chemical factory. Um, I've dropped it off of ladders, it's skidded across the room, it's touched chemicals, and it still writes just fine. So. It's a pretty good testament to uh, Karis Penko's quality. Oh, something that also fell off of ladders multiple times. This is the Leatherman Surge, good old Surge. Uh, there will be a full review of this coming at some point, because I know all my viewers have seen this tool multiple times without me going into, into depth, but I feel like it's been done before, so kind of taking my time on it. You can see I have a whole lot of mechanical wear and tear on here. A lot of the coating is coming off. Um, there is some staining. I think you can see like bluish gray staining on here. That is actually a wood stain. That was from a different project. Um, overall, I don't think this incurred much damage from the chemical factory. If anything happened, it was in here in the T-shank, if I can get it open on camera. There we go. This little nub right here. Yeah, it wasn't like that before I was working as a chemical blender. So in here, there's probably a little bit of corrosion damage. However, the mechanism works fine. Um, yeah, anytime I was getting powder or dust or liquid chemicals in here, I would try and rinse it out and blow it out with compressed air immediately, and I think that's part of the reason it has survived this long. And it continues to be an everyday carry item for me. So, shout out to the Leatherman Surge, still killing it. And last up, this is the Gerber EAB, that stands for Exchange a Blade. And you know what, why don't I exchange a blade live, just so I can show you how easy this is and uh, why I was doing it every day. So the only tool you're gonna need is actually a US penny or basically any coin. Because you can see this is basically just a utility blade holder. And uh, this came in handy when I was in a situation where I didn't want to use the Kershaw because uh, there were times where I was cutting open bags of salt or bags of caustic soda sodium percarbonate, um, all kinds of stuff that was just super reactive, super sketchy, would definitely have destroyed the Kershaw completely. And uh, that's where this little guy came in. So it has seen thousands of pounds of salt, caustic soda, percarbonate, um, got tons of liquid chemicals, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, 
potassium hydroxide, just all kinds of stuff. But because the blade is replaceable, it always came in handy. And somehow, as you can see from the aluminum body of this thing, it looks fine. There's a little bit of mechanical wear on the pocket clip, but otherwise is basically like the day I got it. Oh, I guess the blade centering is a little bit off, but I think that's from being in my pocket more than actual like damage from use. Okay, we've stopped turning, so the set screw is in place. My only problem with this was that the Teflon washer, I don't know if you can see it in here, Teflon washer got a little squished. I think it pops out somewhere. You can see it exposed right here, a little bit of exposure right here. But anyway, yeah, this can also be open one-handed. Let me see if I can flick it. There we go. So yeah, you just grip it back here and you can flick the blade out and that was also extremely handy. This was also my um, loner knife. Like if someone was like, hey Joe, do you have a knife on you? I gotta open some other bag of chemicals in some other part of the warehouse. I would hand them this um, because it's not challenging to figure out how to open and close it. And also I knew whatever they were cutting, this thing was gonna be fine. Uh, I've literally dropped this into a uh, spinning like live mixer full of powdered chemicals and uh, I just kind of drained it out the bottom with the rest of the powder. <laughs> it was uh, pretty funny actually. I really thought it was going to be mangled but it's fine. Here's that wear on the pocket clip by the way. It's fairly deep carry but here you go. There's the the biggest rub of this tool but honestly I would recommend this to anybody the Gerber EAB. There is even a smaller and lighter version of this now with some like speed holes in there. So if you look it up online, that's what you might find. Okay, and that was the core of my EDC as an industrial chemical blender. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, I think it's kind of interesting and um, I'm pretty surprised that I only really had to retire one piece of gear out of this set. And honestly, this knife is perfectly good. Like, I could use it. Um, I just choose not to, because um, I kind of like it, you know? It's got cool patina on there from all kinds of things. I don't know, a lot of memories tied up with it, I guess. And uh, I'm getting sentimental as I get older. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you feel like supporting the channel, hit like. Please share my content with your friends if they're also interested in this kind of thing. And I do have a Patreon. Patreon members will get bonus content. That's stuff that doesn't make it to the channel. My notes. Um, I'm going to start doing some Patreon-specific videos and content pretty soon here. So, yeah, I'm gearing up. And uh, hopefully somebody joins me soon. Anyway, thanks again. This has been Ink and Iron. I have been Joe. You've been a great viewer. Have a great day. I'll catch you on my next video.